All right, welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to go ahead and build a couple of tools. Um, and then I want to do some base upgrades. Um, but in order to do that, we're going to need to upgrade our power supply, which means I'm going to want to get that thermal plant put in. And before I can do that, I need a power transmitter blueprint. So before we actually start building onto the base, we're going to actually take a trip out to the mushroom forest. Off that away and get some blueprints. Maybe even hit a wreck that's out there, but uh, depends on what we find. Might save that for a later episode, we'll see. Play partially translated broadcast. Nine new biological subjects designated. Mode. Hunting. Analyzing. Sharing subject locations with other agents. Okay, that's everything. And just a quick reminder, when you're building new tools, you can use partially used or even completely exhausted batteries, and the tool will still start with a full charge. Propulsion cannon, there's once or twice it comes in handy in a wreck, but it's really pretty rare. Um, you mostly only need it to get into the Aurora, and at one spot in there, it, it helps a lot to have it to navigate within the Aurora. Um, the rest of the time, it's just taking up a 2x2 two two inventory slot for no real benefit, so I'm going to leave it here. Um, and also, before we take off, Grab a snack and top up my food reserves. Oh. Man, when they get those streaks behind their fins like them, they're like that. They're really a pain to catch. They they're in like flight mode or something. Mushroom Forest is really useful for certain blueprints. Sometimes you can find modification station fragments there. Um, often you'll find Cyclops bridge or hull fragments. Um, you'll find stasis, uh, I've said stasis, power transmitters there occasionally. Um, if you don't want to navigate there by compass, you can another radio message. We're close enough. I'm going to pop back and grab that before we go. Um, but yeah, you can navigate there by following the edge of the crash zone um, along the edge of the grassy plain there. Um, or you can go straight there. It's basically due east. But we're going to go ahead and skim through the crash zone because sometimes you can even find that power transmitter fragment in the crash zone there. And just as a quick reminder, in the crash zone, pretty much everything on the near side of the Aurora here is safe. You don't want to go back behind those nozzles back there or too far out in front. Uploaded to PDA. We 
might be able to grab that while we're out there, actually. It's going to be pretty close to where we'll be. Now, the reason um, I want to make sure and upgrade my power supply before I install the moon pools and the scanner room um, is because both of those tend to be kind of power hungry. The moon pool sucks a lot of power while it's charging a vehicle, which we're going to need to do pretty quick here. Our CMOS is down to 37%. And the scanner room is really power hungry while it's scanning. Like it will suck a pair of solar cells dry um, way before the night is through if you try and scan with it when there's no daylight or if you forget and leave it on. Okay, so there's the... Did I actually... So there's the... There's the mushroom forest. Um, if you really want to, you can fly up and down this cliff wall. Sometimes you'll find uh, lithium or shale nodules, especially close to the bottom, but it's not super necessary. No. It can be awkward to fly the sea moth in amongst the mushrooms. You can end up banging into things a lot. Oh. That's a bridge fragment. Oxygen efficiency decreased. As I was saying, it can be awkward to fly the sea moth in amongst the mushrooms, but we're deep enough here without the ray breather that you want to keep it pretty close. Yeah, we already got that. Um, oh, look, jelly rays. Jelly rays are hands down one of my favorite things to hatch in the alien containment. Um, they're pretty, they make interesting noises, um, so I like to hatch a bunch of them. There's another bridge fragment. I like to hatch a bunch of them and just release them to wander around my base. Yeah, we've already got the moon pool. Actually, let me double check, because I'd hate to think, yeah, no, we do. We've done that kind of thing before. You think you have the blueprint, so you pass up the fragments, and then you get back to your base and realize, oh, no, we didn't. It's a little fiddly here. It's too, too tight. It's also less easy doing this at night than it would be during the day. There's just less light down here. I'm actually going to pick that up because I'm pretty sure that's a jelly, uh, jelly ray egg. What is going on? Oh, it's weird lighting. <laughs> oh, that's a bridge fragment. That's all of them. There we go. New blueprint acquired. That is a hull fragment. get too far out that way. Oh wait, yeah, no, that's going to be bulb zone out there. That's not too bad. There's some uh, bone sharks and stuff, but they're not the end of the world. You just don't just give them a little space and you'll be fine. another wreck out in the deep sparse reef that we have to hit later anyway and there's usually a lot of hull fragments around there too so if I don't find a lot of those here I'm not 
too worried about it. What's that? Oh, that's another egg. That, I'm pretty sure, is a bone shark egg. Scanning around in the um, mushroom forest, it can be really helpful to have a compass, because um, otherwise it can be really easy to get disoriented. There's another whole fragment. Man, they're just... It's just thick with them out here. There's another bridge fragment over there, too. Look at that. I mean, you normally expect to see a few, but... trip. Let's head back to base and build some stuff. Now if you follow that ridge, it'll take you back to the mountain island. And you'd want to head a little more... Yeah, you'd kind of want to head northish on that, because if you stay close to this edge of the mushroom forest, you'll end up on the wrong side of that mountain. You'll get to say hi to a reaper. Oh, hey. There's Life Pod 6. It's right next to this wreck. I just forgot to... Uh, forgot to go here. I don't know what's out this way before. This is... I need you to stay calm. Spiders. We're not in immediate danger. Where are the rescue teams? The Aurora didn't make too. it. So, where are the rescue teams? They're dead, oh. ma'am. We already have we that. We have rendezvous coordinates, but the routes are radiated. Oh. Funny. So, what are you going to do? I'm head of human resources, ma'am. This is not my expertise. What are you doing? You were gone so long. I thought you'd drown. Put the flare down. Well, I was going to try and attract someone's attention. That's not a distress flare. Stop waving it around like that. You'll catch the fuel line. We'll go back for that other one later. Integrating new PDA data. And now you know what happened to the people on Life Pod 6. What? I'm gonna need some more titanium. Guess I don't really need a seam off for that. a stalker with a pile of it somewhere in here. Speaking of which... Yeah, there we go. That's like... Yeah, that ought to do for now. 
now. I get one more on the way back. Question is, no, I have enough of those. I'm going to leave that on tap. Yeah, debating whether to turn some of that titanium into ingots, but I think we're going to need enough of it for building that it won't do that. If you're not close to the geyser, if you didn't want to build a thermal plant, the other thing you could do is build a multi-purpose room or a large room and put a bioreactor in it. Um, bioreactors are perfectly suitable. Um, thermal plants just a little less fuss um, if you have the opportunity. The bioreactor, you have to keep feeding it pretty much anything. Um, peepers. There's something called an oculus down in the jelly shroom caves that's probably about the best energy density. But you can feed it marble melons or pretty much anything you can grow in the base. Um, but first off, we're going to go build that thermal plant. Where is it hiding? Just blind? Yep, just blind. Okay. I need at least one transmitter. Thermal plant. I'm gonna need an aerogel, which is the first thing we've used that for this game. That's the main reason I wanted to make sure I got at least a few gel sacks growing. Gonna need. Oh, gonna need those magnetite for that. Well, that's handy. We'll need more magnetite later, but I almost forgot that that's thing you need magnetite for. So that's the other upside to a bioreactor is it doesn't require any special materials. It's strictly stuff you can get in the shallows. Really easy to build early game to supplement your solar cells. Alright, and yep. That's all we need to start. Now, without a reinforced dive suit, pretty sure I've mentioned before, you want to be really careful about getting directly above that geyser while it's erupting. And unfortunately, you're going to have to get down in there to build that thermal plant in a viable location. And I'm going to probably have to do it in shifts because I don't want to rope them yet. See, I got burned. Um, can easily get killed down here. Not my idea at the time. Dang, I did it again. It, that's the other downside to building a thermal plant like this. It's a bit risky down here because this thing's constantly erupting. They're much easier to build places that have non-erupting vents, like um, like down in Lost River. There's several good places to build a thermal base down there kind of have to because you don't have access to uh, sunlight down there. This is life pod 2 coordinates attached. We're way past our safe depth and bleeding O2. We'll have to swim for the surface, but it's 500 meters straight up. We'll make for the rendezvous and keep you posted. Out. 
Signal location uploaded to PDA. Now, given how that went, I'm going to make a med kit. A spare first aid kit. Yeah, because I'm out of spares and that took me down a ways. Still gotta build that power transmitter to get the power up here. One might be enough. We're not too far away, and they do have a pretty decent range on them. So I think we're good. Now the efficiency of the thermal plant depends on how hot it is where you build it. Building it right on top of the geyser like that uh, should make for plenty of power. Now you'll notice our power before was like 150 because the solar panels give you 75 each. Now it's up to 400. So that should be more than enough for most anything we need to do in the space. All right, that's taken care of. Now, copper. Gold. Okay, I'm gonna have to go grab a table coral. is I build the scanner room there or there or there that partly depends on where I want to put Reinforcement we put in earlier gives us plenty of hull strength to work with. There we go. Okay. Now, what's interesting. After weeks without human contact, it is normal to experience psychological discomfort. Research indicates symptoms may be partly alleviated by adopting a pet or anthropomorphizing an inanimate object. Kind of debating. You can build a multi-purpose room for a lot less investment than you can build a large room. But you really only have to build well, yeah, it just depends what you have available for resources. Uh, a large room gives you space to build pretty much whatever you want in there as far as base modules, bioreactors, water filters, alien containment, multi-purpose rooms. If you're going to put a water filter or a bioreactor in there, then you need a separate one for your alien containment later because there isn't room for both. Let's go crazy. I'll build a big one at any time. But it's totally up to you what you want to do. Fifty minutes ingots take a minute to build. I'm ultimately going to want two of these, I think, because 
Um, I like to build alien containment stacked. Because... Um, you can fit more in them that way, and they look better. Let's go that way. Come on. Good grief. Sometimes the positioning's a little tricky, and it's just possible I'm too close to the moon pool on this side. Oops. Try again. But it's also just such a big object that it can be a real. Oh, yeah, no, that's where it should go. Uh, it's probably... Oh, I bet it's the scanner. I bet it's the scanner. That thing, because it's round, it's got a little bit bigger hitbox than you might anticipate. So, we fix this by doing that. Just gives us a little more room to work. Come on. There we go. Is that it? Yep, that's it. Okay. Now... Curiosity, can I put another one down here? There's a seabed in the way. Yep. Okay. So we could put another one either below or above this one when we get ready to stack them. And just in case I'm coming from this direction and I want to jump straight in, I'm going to build a hatch over here. And before I build anything else, my base strength is down to one, so before I build anything else, I'm definitely going to want to put on some reinforcement. Uh, but that's all we need to build for now. Move this. Actually, kind of forgot I put it there. Should have been in the way. Let's see. Where'd it go? I'm gonna build. We are going to start planting some stuff. Maybe I'll save that.
this is the last thing I'm going to build before I put in linear reinforcement. Just because I don't want to forget again that I wanted to have one there. Alright, so that's it for the moment. Later on, I'm going to put a water filter here and some additional storage and some alien containment. And basically, whatever I want. Um, there's lots of room in there to build. Um, now, a word on these plant shelves marble melons grow really well in a bed, also, in an interior grow bed. The problem I have found lately is that there's something funny going on with the hitbox for them, so it's really hard to strike the mature ones, especially if they're not right, growing right at the edge of the bed, um, which makes them kind of a pain to harvest and replant. So I started doing them in wall planters, just because. I mean, it's a couple extra clicks, but it's not a big deal. The nice thing about those is that basically every time you come back to your base you can harvest and replant. You pick three and strike one and that's enough to top up your food and water nicely. then you can save your filtered water or whatever for longer trips. I still haven't decided where I want to put that. Also, I'm out of titanium again. I'm pretty sure a pot requires two. Yeah, it does. Alright. So now we can add, go, go get some more quartz, add some windows, um, but having the base kind of off a central intersection like this means you never have to run too far to get to the part of the base you're trying to get to. Um, let's see, oh, vehicle modification station, that's the other thing I need to build. Vehicle upgrade console, sorry. chips now that I think about it.
I'm gonna have to snag some more limestone the next time I'm out, I guess. And I can't build that without more titanium. All right, well. Now I mentioned before that Life Pod 17 is a good place to go stock up on titanium, so let's do that. Not Life Pod 17 itself, but but the wreck right near there. Um, you can also go hang it, go over to the crash zone in that direction and actually you know what crash zone's closer right now. Let's go that way first. You can fill up on titanium pretty darn fast over that way. The whole crash zone is just littered with it. And there's minimal vegetation over there, so it's really easy to spot. You just have to make sure you have your radiation suit if you haven't gone to the Aurora yet. Now, speaking of the Aurora, that's another thing I want to talk about. You can do the Aurora much sooner than we have. Pretty much as soon as you have a propulsion gun, a propulsion cannon, and a laser cutter. Um, you'll also want a repair tool, but you should have one of those sooner. Because there are some free Seamoth modules and a whole bunch of other nifty stuff in there that you can get with just that. The reason we haven't done it yet is because we are waiting on a radio message that contains the code to the captain's quarters. Without that code, we can't get into those quarters to retrieve the blueprint. Uh, for the escape rocket that we have to have to finish the game. So it's not like you can't go in there and get stuff and then come back later for the blueprint. It just means making an extra trip. I kind of don't want to do that. We didn't run into any crash fish in there. Where is my sea moth? Oh, no. Yeah, see, look, I'm already full on inventory. And I'd even get to the crash zone. There it is. I'm going to change the color on that because that is just, it's too easy to lose. And you really don't want to lose your sea moth or lose track of your sea moth. Especially when you're like wreck diving or down somewhere where you can't get to the surface easily. That's the kind of thing that'll kill you. Wrong beacon. Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and dock my Seamoth and let her start charging. Welcome aboard, Captain. Not quite grown yet. producing stuff like this is when the, the 
dual fabricators come in pretty handy. find a spot with some more limestone or just look for it whenever I'm out because I'm going to need more copper later. Alright, and there you have it. That'll also give you a charging status. You can adjust the color scheme on your Seamoth and build your upgrade modules for basically every vehicle short of the Cyclops. I think we're good for now. Um, that's everything that I wanted to build on this base for the time being. Um, I will catch you in the next episode. Maybe we'll do some wreck, wreck diving. Thanks for stopping by.